All right, the recording is on. I was saying good morning from wherever you are, from Kenya, Rwanda, Nigeria, uh, Ethiopia, everywhere. So this the stand-up is just the same as usual. You know, yeah. So let me welcome people. Like you can tell us how was yesterday, how did you cope with yesterday? And then maybe any challenge. What are you just preparing for today? How are you going to plan for your your, your day? Okay, just like that, you know. Before that, maybe we can see if there's any announcement from Ten Academy. I can see, yes. Can see a hand raised from Ten Academy. In case you're speaking, you're muted. I can't hear you. Is this a blind? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, this is. Yes, sure, can hear you. Yeah, I have an announcement. Yeah, I've sent the broadcast to the all broadcast group just to inform you that the technical tutorial is supposed to hold 9:30 p.m. EC. It's now tomorrow, 1 p.m. EC. So when you take that? Yeah. Please do you get that. Oh, the you know, here, I will hear you. Hello? You can I didn't I didn't get you well black. Okay. I said today's technical you know, tutorial is you supposed to hold 9 a.m. to see. It's not tomorrow yeah. on PM to see. Yeah, so I've sent I've updated the notion and the and I've sent I've sent the uh, notification to the class group on Slack. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Blood. So uh let's now start. Uh we can welcome anyone. You can raise up your hand. How was yesterday? How did you just, just spend your day? Then a challenge, maybe in a broker, anything you have you want to say now or today. Yeah, we welcome. You can give your floor just a hand as usual, as the usual stand up. Yeah. Hands, hands, hands. If you're ready to speak, if you're ready to share with us, yes, fish. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing great. Yeah. So uh, yesterday, uh, if you remember, we had some uh, uh, setbacks. We didn't actually. Uh, progress as much as we wanted but today we did really good yesterday we really did good after the sessions we created this uh, workflow plan uh, and we actually understood uh, really almost everything we are supposed to do and we created this workflow diagram according to that we uh, divided based on that the workflow plan so everything is really good and we also have uh, some success over some parts of the workflow plan we designed and everybody is really getting along it was a really really nice uh, group the group i was uh, assigned to we really had a fun meeting uh, so it was really fun uh, the meeting was really fun we had uh, lots and lots of things to share technical and non-technical and so everybody is doing good from my uh, team and maybe somebody from my team can also say something about that but it was really uh it was a really good team and we really had fun dividing those tasks and we also had uh, a very uh, good success over the plans we uh, devised so that's uh it from my uh, group and maybe somebody else from the team can also share Thanks. Okay. Anyone from and the no team blockers can maybe add on that? Until this point. Okay, fine. Anyone from a his group to share maybe to add on what he said or anything else? No one, I guess. 
Okay, if no one is fine, maybe we can become some other groups or maybe any other person. This here, Biba, seems like you have something to say. Yeah, um, sorry, I just joined now. But uh, given we want to leave Friday, like Wednesday afternoon, more open for people to focus on resubmission and trying to see if, I, if we can take this opportunity to actually more than updates, we can put it as QA as well. Just, you know, what are the challenge related? Um, what are the conceptual, the technical, and then I can answer or the tutors can answer. And then instead of, because we were planning to do that on in the, in the afternoon, but maybe if you don't mind, like we can, we can take this opportunity actually to, to do it much more of on the QA part. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I think uh, yeah. it's well noted. Okay. So yeah. So anyone who's yeah who's kind of about the challenge document because now by now you have already looked, you know, went through it. You are trying, attempting something, and there there might it's a good time to. I think it was asked probably last time by Andernet. I think Wednesday to have one session as well as on one Monday. So we can take that opportunity now and then we can continue. Okay. So Sa. All right, I can see fish. You have a question? Fish. Yeah, actually uh, I do. So there's this uh, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. We can. Yeah, now we can. I think there was. Yeah. Okay. So, browsing to the file to be uh, exact uh, about the words I use, but I we found this uh, this task where we're supposed to put uh, the results of our back testing uh, our back testing result into a top and also to do that to put that in a database. So my question would be: Is this the what 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 is the i mean why are we doing uh, why are we putting things both in the kafka topics and in the database isn't that redundant or i mean is that supposed to make us um, familiar with the tools we are using both from the database end and from the top uh, kafka topics end or is that something uh, is there something i am we are missing i mean why is there a redundancy Zaria, is there? I mean, I can answer that question, but if we are, if there are tutors, especially those who work on Kafka. Um, Kafka, mostly, most of the time, you can keep it, but it's not meant for as a database. So, anyone uh, from tutors, you wanna explain? Not sure who's there, so then like let me continue. So Kafka is not a database, right? Even if you can have uh, unlimited loop, it basically only it's a broker. That means you're best basically uh, putting message from here and there. And database is the actual home for you know permanent or kind of whatever you want to store. And whenever you do back tests, if you don't store it. In, in the database, mm. basically you're going to lose it after a while. And that means you have to compute it again. So don't think of it, the Kafka topics that are just Kafka as a database. Does that make sense? So, or is that, is your question different? Because uh, yeah. I think for me, you treated Kafka as a database. Uh, yeah, one of the problems is that, but uh, I, I understand the, uh, the structure that we get while doing these things on database and the longevity, longevity where we can store everything in the database and we can get it in the long term. But uh, I think this is really 
uh, straightforward uh, application and not there are so there are not that much too many fact um, uh, what do you call them uh, things that are going to consume from this Kafka topic so I think the question would be uh, we can directly store the results the and everything I think maybe maybe structure. maybe let me let me I think you are you're not probably getting the objective of the project the objective is not for one person to do it like if you're if you are serving it's the same as last week if you are serving um the text to a few people kafka is an overkill you can remove kafka and replace it with any python queue or any other queue but only you you start thinking about kafka whenever you are expecting multiple concurrent requests and that's real real, real life any startup or anyone is not going to plan for one person or two people right they don't know the demand it's it's a demand if you think of it it's like there is supply that means in this case supply is the your resources then the demand is unknown but your supplies basically your supply engines are known or at least its cost is predefined and within that cost to be able to reliably serve is what you need kafka but you can really overall just remove kafka if, if you don't want that now database is not a replacement or kafka is not a replacement but database database is just much more you, know, you want depending on the type of also thing you want whether it's transactionally one fast read fast write or whether you want it to be you know real time then you choose your database so in this case all you want is just basically someone gives you a scene and then you don't want to recompute because we know i mean one way to know it you know we can tell you that this is a real problem for us it will take us as the number of points that we want to backtest grow and as the number of parameters we search grow then it becomes actually intractable it becomes two hours to you know an hour or two to actually do backtest and then a backtest that takes one hour or two you can't do backtest because you want to do backtest so much as fast and a lot as possible even one person would generate backtest you know they want to test so many things so many variables so many coins so many things and then that is what causes such a you know if you want if you have a very quick lookup of your results then it becomes better so it is with the complexity of the problem is not if you're thinking of it as for you to do backtest you don't need kafka you don't need database you don't need anything you just need a python code that you can run and it's very simple but if you are serving other people or a demand a real actually real life demand then the complexities become necessary and the kafka is only necessary again to synchronize and you can replace it by any quiz queue system does that make sense again if you have questions left ask them so that it gets clear also to other people maybe i think it's, it's a good valid question yeah, okay that, that can i attempt to like well, can i share what i understand uh, about yeah, this yeah okay uh what i understood uh, like about this specific task is uh whenever the user <coughs> requests this a new uh backtest run and uh we run that so uh, we, we just uh, received the scenes from the user using Kafka and we run the test. So after that, after we run the test, uh, if we're not like uh, going to use Kafka, uh, one thing uh, we can do is uh, after like the test being run, we trigger uh, another function or another like service that's going to like take the results of the run and store it in our database so that later later like we we won't do like the same run uh if we are going to receive like the same thing so we will just uh give back the uh results to the user uh but uh, we, we uh, like but you know in order to do that what, what i understand is after uh the after we uh receive the scenes from using kafka and run the test uh we publish another topic 
uh, of the runs of the test, uh, based on the runs of the test. So whenever a test uh, is run, like uh, run and uh, being completed, it will uh, publish a topic on the Kafka cluster and our like, uh, let's say save to the database service will consume uh, or will subscribe to that topic and uh, uh, get triggered and like uh, store that to our database. So uh, that topic is going to be like published by uh, the run and it's going to be consumed by the the like uh, the service that's going to write the results to the to the database and later on we will serve it to the user that's what I mean. exactly i mean that's that's exactly the case that that's correct so but um Sam, just any like is it an outstanding question and i'm gonna also use the the whiteboard actually um to actually just illustrate what looks like so you you are probably more likely to see i think it would tell you that there is the whiteboard being open do you see, i think you need to go in probably so do people see the whiteboard uh, requires access. Oh. Uh, share. Okay, let me share public restricted instead of restricted. Uh, anyone with the link. Okay, now you can try. So, yeah, I see some people coming. So, let me know if everyone is joined or if any not. I mean, I can screen share as well the whiteboard actually. Uh, I don't need to. So I think that's one way, easier way as well. So you see the screen now? Hopefully. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, the way that you know the architecture what you want is okay so um see the screen. so here scene basically defines let's imagine um uh, start date um and and date and parameter range lens uh, for example um if it's ema like a uh, slow window range and fast window range okay so maybe and many other things of course it will be fine so let's imagine this is a json and of course that means it's a proper json uh, can uh yavi can you give us yeah. a small description about the scene so that so, you could sorry a, a basic description about the scene what, what is the scene a scene is basically just one instance of something right it's nothing it's not technical so uh let's say one to 20. It is nothing, so a scene is nothing got to do with a technical thing. It's just how you specify whatever is necessary for a strategy or to run a one backtest. So a scene is a one backtest. Like for a parameter, 
that defines one back test. Okay? Is that is that clear or is it still confusing? It's still confusing for um, me. Yes. Okay, what is what is confusing? Let's just see what do you mean like have you not used parameter files to spe to specify a configuration file? So has has anyone not used a configuration file to to tell a code? You know some input parameters. The same as like you give a function. You know it's input parameters. Let's say you know some uh, the data. Like then you can specify the for the entire code how it does something through a configuration file. Because that's. So, I mean, actually, this is this is a scene, not like this. So let's make it. So this is scene one, and this can be scene two. So, like this is a file. File. So dot JSON. And then you can have another one. That specifies scene two. That basically means another type of run. So in this case, for example, here also coin DTC. Please, what do you mean by slow window range and fast window range? So that, that one is like a parameter. Like I mean. You can define it as a JSON. JSON means I can I can specify like that. You can specify anything else. But in this case, there is one algorithm that that has a slow window and a fast window, and I call it slow window range, fast window range. But you can call it Yabdabal and somebody else. It's like it's a naming. So in this case, I might just do that. And I might change for this one. I could do 50. No, I, I actually, it's not true, actually. This one, you know, it's, it's even specifying this one. I don't need to, to do this. I can just make it, you know, let's make it actually this one. Three, like one number and only. And let's imagine uh, 15. And this one. So now this is fast. Now instead of window range, I mean I can just call it. Um, um, it's called moving so slow and fast. So I can call it that one. I can call it anything else I want, right? I can call it a uh, um, slow moving window and fast moving window. I mean, I I decide the name and how I will read it because I have to read this one. I have to read this JSON, and I have to read what what this parameter mean for me in my model. Okay. Yes. I have That's a question. Hold on. Um, is it how is the scene different from um, event? How is it what? How is the scene different from an event? Nothing. I mean, a, a scene is just we call it a scene just because back trader call it a scene. I can call it a configuration file. Do you want me to call it a configuration file so that you don't get confused? Uh, or no, a configuration, a parameter, a list of parameters. Uh -huh. So a scene is just really what specifies a bunch of parameters that a back trader, in this case, usually uses. It's a scene is for a back trader, and if you call, if you use another one, they might call it configuration file. Okay, so it's, don't get like the name itself is not the most important. That's what what it, its purpose. Its purpose, you know, almost always terminologies are important. Terminologies are really 
like what confuses you. Some people give terminology, some sophisticated terminology for a glass that is less transparent. And then you're like, what is that? It's just a glass, that's it. You don't care about maybe it's less transparent. That person gave it. Another one says a tall glass, they give it pint or something. And then you're like, what is this pint thing? It's not really, as long as you really understand what it does, what is its content, you know, the, the name is not important. So in this case, it's just that if our, if our code, we have to, we can write a code that requires, for example, also that tells me, uh, I, um, you know, something where it is running. Um, for example, I am, let's say in my code, I use depending on from where it is being requested, you know, uh, from where it's requested, I might change some parameters. Okay. And this is just a parameter file that really allows me to control my entire code flow, code execute for that particular case. Now, earlier I said range, but range in this case is to, you have to now expand that range into then form multiple scenes or multiple parameters. So that let's imagine for now, we define scene to be just one single run or one single execute that basically specifies for one single execute. Everything else, if I specify range, then it should be uh, implicitly known that I am gonna decompose this range into some, some form and then I can create multiple scenes out of one scene, okay? Um, but in this case, you know, let me not confuse just that because the, that's not my, my target. But it's just basically the whole point is that its element is to allow you to be able to do so many things, like to control your code. So this this one allows, specifies, essential. You may not specify, you may not need a scene if you define all of this inside your code. Are we clear on that? If there is any question, it's Can good ask to you? ask you. Yeah, go on. Okay, uh, it's clear. Uh, the scene, the whole JSON part is clean, but uh, where are we doing this? I mean, is it going to be dynamic? The values we're going it to is ask going to be dynamic the most of the time. Area. Exactly. So the user specifies this, and and then you take this one, and that's exactly where I am coming. That's why if you are even if not only a user, even one person is using, they want that one person one will will, will don't want to change code. They want to actually change only a parameter or which means they can automate the number of tests by creating these scenes and in the code as soon as there is a new scene a new parameter is present it can run right so instead of you running blah blah you know even automation element almost every automation means you have to control your code by something else so exactly this parameter is going to be defined by actually you know, from the front end, most likely. So, or there will be a back end that generates this scene, given a front end request. The front end might, so when we say about parameter I and I, so let's imagine this is the scene, but now let's create another one um, that actually called parameters, uh, like these ones. I and I. Just again, both are, you know, whether it's a JSON, whether it's a JSON or, you know, parameter I and I, they, their purpose is identical. Their purpose is just to specify some, in this case, let's say parameter I and I is for humans. JSON is not for humans. For, for humans, maybe it's a parameter I and I, then I would say range, uh, um, SMW range is equal to one point or two sixteen. I, I just want you to know that there is no specific FMW range is equal to and then 
So I can even specify not only range, but I can specify also stepping window. So in this case, I might just say five. In this case, I, in this case, maybe ten. And in this case, uh, two or four. Okay. Now, so this basically I will interpret it to be okay. When you create the 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 search parameters between two and sixteen, and jump in steps of four, and this one is saying like that, um, the same. And then I might specify a range, start and dates uh, again here, and and dates. But then I might specify many things: log folder. Um, root folder I might specify here uh, s3 folder okay and then log name log goods fixed and then I might even specify uh, verbose or means chat uh, log label info you know I can specify anything here in such a way that I can control now so you know now by now you know the parameter ini is for me to be able to edit it in a notepad or something cleanly and um so for example coin and then i might specify eth etc so um i don't know um, ada What else? We know also Algorand, uh, Rand, or Al. Okay. Don't know which one the thing, but it's called Algo. Many things I can discuss. Uh, okay. So, and I can specify you know many more, but let me specify it this way. Okay. Um, so now the question for this is that. Now, I might use this one and I might generate from this. I think this is someone's noise and someone mute. Um, I might generate so I might generate I can process this one you know so this one i can i can have another system so this can be um whenever i run it myself this can be from the front end right and whenever i run it myself i have I have this one and then I generate this one but whenever I am actually uh, running from front end so this one is like person right so let's just give this one a color um, uh -huh. sure. color, color, color. so let's keep it okay and then if I want to give So here, for example, front end. Uh, so now this one is again, you know, it it it. Uh, so, so this from this again, I can generate. Uh, 
multiple. So now I have, as a human, when I run the system, like if I provide it as a package, someone can specify this, then there is, um, there is, So there is basically a process that can be a backend, that can be a code, that can be whatever, that just generates, processes this one and generates scenes, okay? And then those scenes then will be fed, of course. Um, now I'm just gonna go to this one that will basically be fed. Normally, this one can be, um, a code, um, basically, or notebook, or API, right? So this can be that. Now, if it's a code, you know, like you just run it, that's fine. Now, what you are creating is because you are creating a system, you're trying to do it, to do it an API. Now, let's, this is, so if we finish on this one, if we finish on this one, if everything is clear, I can go to the next step. Is everything clear here for everyone? Or is there anything that is anything even not clear? Just, you know, put it out. Yes, uh, in, the, in the back page, yes, uh, the front end fetch from browser request. Uh, I didn't get that one. So, for example, you the way that you specify how users specify what kind of back tests they choose, is from from the user in, from it can be from the front end. Let's give let's imagine that you give them a form, okay? Um, I don't know, it's like a form. Notes. So let's just create it here. Sticky notes. So form. It's maybe from the form that you specify, right? Um, so in this one you might um, it's an annoying what what can I do to not so it, it, Let me delete this one and then let me create a form like that. So, so, so you basically specify like something and then you, you probably to ask them drop down sometimes, you know, and sometimes multiple choices, multi, sometimes calendar, right? So you might specify calendar for like this and that. And then that's where like basically you, you collect this one. And then from this, you basically process it. The, the, so this is browser, right? So this is what, what I mean by browser. So, so this is basically what I mean. Just by a browser, okay? So you, you collect it from here and then you get something similar or something that, that you can process. And then you process it and then you generate it. Ultimately though, the code, so here is basically the code um, and that is what is accepted. Basically, code API. Okay. Uh, what what I understood is uh, we we are specifying the the same JSON file. So from the parameter, let's say that the parameters are the row our row data. It have all the the same uh, the, the same uh, parameters. So in the front end, we'll ask the user how what what uh, what same parameters you all want in. In the, exactly. In the back. So yeah, yeah. So it's basically. Yeah. Yes. Go on. 
they will start uh, they will state uh, the start end date coin and the other parameters yeah uh, including for example do you want to run it like scheduled you know however sophisticated you become ultimately though you want to specify it to have a standard template almost always your code is pre-written and you don't want to modify it so you want to have a standard parameter setting that's what's let's call it a cindar one it's only only the code version this template input template will only change you know once in a while depending on you want to add functionality whatever here however you can actually make it some things optional some things whatever for example you might not specify in the front end log name whatever you might if you want to but you can reduce some things if they don't specify you know you you have in this processing ini logic or process basically uh, front end uh, generated content logic you specify whatever and then you ultimately want to generate a template that your code understands because that's the simplification you want okay i get that thank you okay is that clear with everyone uh okay. assuming just to, uh, -huh. Go on. uh just to uh, reiterate uh so like we potentially have two uh possible like uh, ways we get the parameters from right so one being uh, uh if we provided a rest api and like provide the documentation like we uh, receive that uh, json data or any data uh as an argument and process uh it for the user and the other is uh, we could build the front end and uh, using the form field, maybe like submit that to the backend. I mean, to exactly. our like. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if, if someone is exactly using only your API, they don't need to do all this. They just provide you the agreed template. The same as that you use any API that you have to specify, you know, when you used uh, the colon or cohere I think you know you had to provide it that in the template that you required that's basically it yeah it's clear okay now after that that's where the architecture comes in right so the architecture one can think of is that it's for a very really good reason i'm specifying seem to be just a single run instead of multiple runs because if it's multiple run parallelization whatever you have to you have to decide where where do you do it do you do it parallelization at you know backtesting level you know you receive this thing and then you loop for example if there are multiple coins all of those multiple coins you run them parallelly within the machine that you have or do you so this is exactly the type of decisions one has to make there are multiple ways of parallelizing of course you are parallelizing things and you are parallelizing some things parallelization then you have to decide two or three elements Okay, one of the decisions you have to make is so um parala, uh, so one of the decisions you have to make is that what is efficiency? So so and the other one is of course that means you want to run fast. But then also you want to be able to provide uh, functionality. So for example, if there are, if two runs share the same thing, you know, you want to be able to communicate with that, right? And then there are main multiple reasons for parallelization uh, design. So it's not an easy one. But in this case, what we are asking you, because right now the implementation we have is that it actually parallelizes both coin coins it does parallelize it through trade uh, and then also the data split so the one part that you have is that there are three elements that you can identify so there's data split so for example you might run on specific on dates only of like 10 days each that you separate and then you run like hourly okay so you know um, and then you, you you kind of only run on a specific data split of course the other one is um 
the coin you can parallelize on multiple coins and then on a strategy that means you may have multiple algorithms that you want to test at the same time right so data split basically means multiple dates you know that you want to run dates separately and then coin means uh, that you have different types of coin and then strategy means basically algorithm okay um, so that's where you have to decide and you know your your whole of design and architecture depends on like what is the best way you know while you do this kind of parallelization what is the best way um, you want to create and then what are other things you can make it faster so in this way like if we now i think the way that we gave you and you, you know is that so you would have this so now there is a scene so basically what you call uh, inputs io uh, inputs basically now all right i think that's probably um based fire right okay so here is input json now i now if i write you don't mind so there is input json that's coming it can be the the back end so in that in terms of design this can be um so so um it's not right and the content and this one can come as part of just the the back end like let's imagine and then you would have one system that actually let's call it for now anything but this is where we, we are saying this can be kafka you know, let's just call it for now kafka okay okay and then you would have another um, of course and then then s3 as well And then some other systems, right? So let's now, uh, that for example, this could come, this can be again orchestrated airflow. So now let, let me just type in each of them. So this can be airflow. Um, this can be database. And then this can be your engine or back tester. Um, right. And now in each of them, I am gonna intentionally include some here it could be whatever that subscribes. Um, it can be a, an engine because if the database is not there. Um, no, let's, let's actually, I don't need that. So, okay. So airflow though can have multiple angles. One of them is, um, okay. So backend usually publishes. So this is usually in one side it publishes and the other side. In the other side, it consumes, and in the one side, it it um, it publishes. And now, the the BT engine, depending on its topic, again, it can do the same, right? So again, just I can. Uh,
Now, airflow can orchestrate many things. It can read and write again. Um, So let's imagine all of the, the elements that it does, it's, let's say it's orchestrated here, okay? So now it can, of course, listen different, whatever, either the BT engines, so even the backend when it's actually doing, and the, the BT engine can publish also log files, blah, 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 to it, right? It's not only the result. So there can be, you know, results, log files, any other thing that it encounters, it publishes. Now, Airflow can actually, the, the very first thing, you can actually, there is a possibility you can actually connect. Instead of BT Engine, publish consumes, but you can also directly connect Airflow to actually um, run. So instead of, for example, if, um, the very first thing it, it can do, the backend, is like a topic that, let's say, BT Engine is not subscribed. So T1, you know, and in T1, only Airflow, so the backend publishes to T1, Airflow reads it, Airflow checks from database, right? And if it is not, then it publishes to T2. Now, this topic T2, is what let's imagine that BT engine is directly have access to, while T1 is basically directly access to or listened by. So it is back end and then airflow um, communicates with, with this T1. Sorry for my thing, but the T2 it's basically airflow reads it. Of course, airflow has access as well as also BT engine has access. So if you separate it like that, airflow becomes the orchestrator to even do like whether the scene, the available scene is available in the database or if you're using data lake in S3. Okay. Now let me stop there because it's slightly so the architecture you can make it now if you can K. You can make it anything, just simply direct communication. You can remove this and you can actually only have air, you know, everything. This one publishes to S3, airflow reads from S3, or this one publishes to database. This one reads the airflow, like just reads from database. And then if there's if a, if a result from the table, from the, para, the parameter, the scene table, it reads whenever there is new. And then if the result is not available in the database, it asks BT engine, and then, then it replies back or basically puts it again back into S3. And then uh, backend knowing that if the, you know, the result is available in S3, then publishes it to the front end, okay? So you can actually avoid, if you want to, K as well, but K makes it reliable. Basically K, or in this case Kafka, actually really, is to make it uh, so it's really Kafka is to make it a lot more robust. That means it's fault tolerant. Um, topics don't whatever blah blah. But let, so let me stop there. And if there are any questions. I can see some hands raised. Yeah, uh, I mean, because I can't see them, you can... Yeah, uh, comment. Have Annette. Uh, okay, uh, did you call my name? I'm under it, yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, we, we when we design the system the architecture, it's like more close to this, but uh, uh, I don't really like uh, understand how we uh, go about like doing the BT engine. So uh, instead we uh, approach this, the BT engine to be like a DAG in the airflow. So the airflow will subscribe to the topic and uh, 
yeah in the next uh, uh i'm just before i lose it i'm also publishing it just uh, in the wicked channel so that he can have access okay yeah okay great uh yeah so uh we 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 approached the bt engine or uh, the back test like code to live inside of the DAG. so uh airflow will subscribe to a topic in kafka and will be like uh, it will trigger the test to be run uh, uh, another DAG will also do uh checking uh if the there if there is a uh, an already run uh, result in the database and uh, like do all, all, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, I, one way to go about it is maybe like to uh, put the BT engine in uh, another like service, a microservice or yeah. Uh, it it has to be. Way to go about it. No. So which one do you like? Uh, I, I think that's why I'm saying and, it has to be some form of API accessible because yeah. this one, can run it also in separately right so yeah. in a way um so there are many architectural chains you can put here right so you can actually make the db and um this one like let's just let me change color where is color Fortunately, uh, so let's say you can actually make them communicate so in that case you no know, you can do all of the DB checking inside the BT engine, right? Uh, as well. So the BT engine is really much more the computing part that, that runs back, back trader or any other back trader, right? You can have also multiple BT engines depending on the request, right? So in this case, let me just say, so this is one and then um, this is another one. So what, what would the role of Airflow be uh, if we directly Airflow is synchronizing, right? no. I mean, so this one can directly connect and consume, just as if this is another microservice that is triggered or whenever there is that, you know, it's alerted. Um, but it also can be orchestrated. Now, the Airflow, as I said, is really, I mean, it is, you can make it to be synchronized. You can basically, exactly as I say it now, Airflow can given it's a DAG that basically calls these APIs. So you can make it exactly as you design as well. So I think that's, that's so, but then you don't run everything in the airflow engine. You know, think of it whenever I say a box, this is actually a machine, right? There's CPU and RAM oh, wow. there. And, and then, then that depends, right? And BT engine is also like that. And this is another B, BT, right? Um, so i see now uh instead of like uh putting the bt engine or like the the run to be a dag we can make a dag to call an api to trigger the bt yes. engine to run exactly that, exactly to get results from it that makes sense yeah. so, you know you can have uh, so this one is bt engine one and this one you can have it into two if you want to, like in a very, very, and each of them can run different type of, um, like this one is back trader, this one is vector PT, this one trick trade, many things, right? So you can also do like that. So it's basically an airflow can synchronize, just can't call directly, but, and this can directly result to airflow, but for the sake of also simplicity, this, Backtester trader can also publish to like for example, BT Engine two publishes to topic three, BT Engine three um, publishes to you know topic four, right? And Airflow has access to all of them, so you can actually make the communication that way as well. But that it's nice. yeah that that is, yeah. Go on. Uh, sorry, um, here uh, is it uh, possible in the front end to have. Uh, the users to have some selection, for instance, if you are using different strategies, which is yes. engine one, two, three, four, and uh, if we have three or five uh, different strategies, then uh, is it possible for the 
end users or for those investors to select for those images yeah. in the front end and uh, yeah. have and then the you process it you process it yeah. in the back end to split yeah. it into multiple things to yes. publish each of them probably to kafka and then yeah. airflow process each of them and get everything exactly yeah yeah so I, the front end is basically the you know the user interacts only in this case here yeah the, is, is that options is possible for they maybe it is maybe they may they don't have uh, any of clohat was done at the back they only access yeah. the front end then in the we, in our front end we can uh, perform that and uh, we can easily select that which is the low cost and which one is the best to, to have exactly. the best way okay Thank absolutely yeah. yeah so so this type of architectures is really dependent as i said on efficiency functionality blah blah right so what is easy you know how many things do you want to do how easy how scalable you want as i said you can independently by doing that by doing it so kafka that means you can independently add multiple things change without even introducing so then you now create while bt engine is working now you want to test a new type of back trader or a new type of you know a new version you you know you you create a topic another one and you do that so it's you know so kafka is really this usually a central uh, switch that enables you you know a lot more efficient transportation reliability and and I, I know we are running we really run out of time but if there's one question or just at least give me your impression was that useful is that something that now you have much better understanding and you are very it seems like you have a lot of questions maybe we can just give you a few seconds to each yeah. one yeah, yeah i mean so i i i don't see anything so you you mediate because i'm like on the yeah. window yeah all right so wangui maybe if you can use a few seconds then also go to Emmanuel. um my question was about the database and then the s3 bucket um, yeah. My understanding is that uh, S3 is a data lake, and a data lake can store structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. So why would you use both um, a data warehouse and a data lake if you could just structure your data and keep it in the S3 bucket? Simply because S3, you need to manage it yourself. And that is, very, you know, and it's not easy sometimes so and it's slower sometimes so if you use data warehouse that can do everything that's and almost always we go to database because database in itself has engine and it's fast to query if you use postgres whatever they are very much optimized on data reading stuff and all you need is how fast can the user get and and then how much do you want to implement if it's just db then you can query S3, you need to go to specialized tools like, um, you know, uh, Lambda or some other um, tools that allows you to query from S3, you know, and so it's slightly slower uh, also to get results. But yeah, you can use only Data Lake. You can do hybrid, it's called Lake House. But if you use Data Warehouse, like Snowflake, then you can get both at the same time as well. But it's a lot more is, uh, a lot more is that. Is that clear? Yes, uh, thank you. All right, so we have Emmanuel, then after Emmanuel, Nathaniel. Okay, uh, my question is, uh, I have two questions actually. On the leftmost, on the leftmost end of the, what do you call it, the chart, uh, are we supposed to um, use the scene as a mediator? Can we, can't we just uh, connect the front end to the back end and uh, make requests to the back end according to the uh, inputs written on the form? That's much, much more unscalable. You always want to ensure that in the front end you can change, you can give, you know, for example, unnecessary default parameters. You want to patch them here. 
you can do it because almost always okay. back end front end you know you you can split where you start where you end if you want all your code in the front end you can't but usually in the back end understand a lot more you can also connect i think one of the parts is that you can also connect directly from here to the database as well so things like that you know you you could could assume that there are multiple ways you can design it but yeah it, this is much more of a simplified kind of scalable the usual back end front end parts so that the front end okay. doesn't care about the complexity that you have behind it's just interfaced by a simple back end and that back end can be just an api okay okay i understand uh, and uh okay if you have one more question then you can you can wrap up yeah i have one more question where does the uh, ml flow jump in here again it can be you most likely it's just here right so um when it runs it's the artifacts are here so so i will just be here ml flow because so the reason why I will put it here is because of the artifacts are generated mostly at the running time. Um, mm. And so, and, and that means actually that it might connect also with this one, as well as with this one. Yeah, so looking at the artifacts saved uh, or uh, the three engines, for example, the, we we should to we should be able to choose between the three engines engines right so between ml flow db and s3 you mean or no you know between this no. yeah ah, yeah yeah so the three all of them we're, we're right all of them can connect with ml flow because it's different type of artifacts yeah so that will be a good basis to choose between the engines um i think it's mostly i would say the back end chooses to publish and then the airflow like again the back end you can have multiple depending on the different logic so for example if bt engine 3 was asked in the front end it can publish to different topic mm -hmm. and then airflow knowing that then it takes that one process something publishes there or connects directly to bt engine that the the right bt engine right so Okay. almost all it's just you can synchronize it's um you know the choice of the pt the engine you can put it as part of the selection in front end and the back end logic you know structures okay thank you all right so we have nathanael then after nathanael we have two more people mohammed and mike i think that's it so Nathaniel, if you can please use this time. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have two questions actually. Uh, the first one is asked by Amanu. So I'll go to the next one. While uh, registering with the uh, ML flow, are we going to store the metrics, just the five or the six metrics we're required to generate? I, I think so like it's i think you can really store them i mean so here the ml flow a lot more is um much more on model training right so not only here comes you know bt engine one like algorithm you are selecting here and a lot more of it is just bt engine one you might be playing let's imagine in the back end now not in kafka whatever in the back end let's say lst the different models whatever you 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 have it's an external i mean i i am i'm running out of uh, thing but here there is let's call it experimental space so in that in that experimental space okay uh, uh, it's not finished so so here in the experimental space you're actually generating a model fine-tuning you know you're you're doing it from the other side and then you're publishing it to ml flow now bt engine one when it's requested for example from the backend to do lstm of version some amount then it will basically connect to ml flow and then pull it 
right? And then it can publish back its results to MLflow. And then MLflow independently, you can check it about model performance. Yeah, but in this project, we're not doing any modeling, right? I mean, you're not, so, because this is much more of a data engineering, but it was asked that, you know, you can try LSTM if you if you have time and, and resource, for example, to, to model instead of just only one, um, you know, moving average things, you can try to actually do also one model like based on an LSTM. But that's not, as I said, this is a data engineer more, but you can think of ML flow is there so that you can actually, from your experimental space, you can upload models uh, to ML flow. And ML flow becomes a monitoring tool as well as also the engines can pull data from it, uh, can pull models from it. So in this space, you really can have, you know, also feature stores on their own. You know different things so here um, um, I'm, I'm making now I know that I'm complex making it so complex but the thing is you know that's how things are done it's like in feature store it's another one you know blah blah so in this experimental space is another layer these engines are API another layer these are storing storage one and another layer this communicator is another layer, this scheduler is another layer, and this front and back end are another layer, right? So it's a tech, tech stack. Whenever you now talk tech stack, that's what you're talking. So, okay. So hopefully that's clear. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to keep my question short and concise. So can you um, elaborate with a real world example, like using um, Bitcoin uh, mm -hmm. data from Yahoo Finance and um, uh, elaborate more in the back end Kafka and Airflow BT engine Kafka uh, communication so that be because that part is not really clear for me that uh, you mean, you mean you, you, yeah I mean real world it means like so this is there are so many companies that are exactly providing this type I mean they may not be as sophisticated as the one we are doing here but they are making a lot of money by just allowing people to test. And I will show you now, if we finish this one, I will show you just one simple example. Can you take like, me I mean, through huh? giving an example, uh, giving, giving a, an example from, from the, the, the database into the front end, how the process with, a, with, a, with an example? No, you basically, okay, so the back end, of course, as I said, like the airflow, knowing that the scene output is coming, right? It just returns to the backend and the backend returns to the user because the user pressed and is waiting. It's, mm -hmm. it's stalled, mm -hmm. the user is stalled to actually come to say, okay, I'll come back after 10 minutes or it's just because it's so fast, they got the results. Now they take the results and they can have in the front end to go live trading. That means place a bit, you know, based on the, the output. And then you go directly, basically, to your Binance and and trade. So, do you mean that? Uh, not not sure, but um, for uh, can you get? Back I mean, I don't understand by real life. You mean because real life is really the back, back back test is real life. People live their life just back testing because they want to know what is good, and as soon as they see what's good, they go live and then place a trade and then if that trade if they use you know a million dollar and if that trade is performing five percent then they get you know lots of money and some people do it with a billion a day and then they make millions so i don't know why by, by, by what you mean like mm -hmm. like real real life the back yes, is really telling you result that says like such a strategy will work or these parameters will work and therefore if you trust that and you should trust it then you go act on it and that act can be implemented again in the front end just to directly place with that parameter um, to any exchange real and real money so i think i i misused the the word real life uh because what i mean is um 
with, with within the scope with our uh, week project that we have raw data and uh, uh, what I want is how how the raw data is going to be presented with, throughout the all stages into the uh, front end again that one is uh, it's not part of here but absolutely in the BT, BT engine is the one has to manage probably where to get that data and if you don't like then you have another layer um, that is actually pulling data from let's call it you know like let's call it trade so here another it's it's data like data provider okay um, so you basically you pull data from external systems for BT Engine to run. You know, BT Engine can only run on a data, on a previous data that is run from the pre, you know. So, so it can be, you can pull it as an API. So usually you use an external provider. So that means BT Engine pulls that data. Okay, okay. So, so all of, so all, it's, all of these, all of these would pull from here, like, you know. So they basically pull data, um, basically they, they query it and then they pull data. So, um, okay, so it consume uh, the user's uh, specification about the JSON scene yes. and it which coin, the scene. Yeah, which coin and then the coin data, the historical data is pulled from some service, usually external one from Binance or if it's a stock, it's from Yahoo. Okay, so... So the, uh, but this data can be part of just inside BT Engine, the code. Okay, I get that. So uh, one last thing. So basically, uh, the communication between backend and Kafka is about uh, publishing uh, the scene parameters and uh, consuming the scene result. Sorry, what? The, the backend uh, uh, Kafka communication is basically publishing uh, scene parameters and consuming scene results yes okay i got that thank you great any other question oh. great i hope this was helpful and hello? so we hello yeah uh, this uh, i was on the last part of the queue uh, yeah. and my question was uh so on the task two, it says uh, it wants us to design an SQL uh, table schema to store yes. uh, scene and backtests. So the most uh, important hereby, part, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hereby backtests. Do we mean by that uh, the metrics, uh, the descriptive metrics of each backtest we run have been uh, consumed uh, the scenes from the user, right? Yes, the output of the back trader, basically, whatever necessary to reproduce without too much computation uh, how the back trader would have done given the same scene. So you basically target basically a table that specifies its parameter or its scene and then the back trader outputs for that scene. So, so by, so by the, output, do we mean that the metrics? Uh, the trades, like the trades, you know, no, no, it's not metric only. It's just trades, like, you know, back trader, basically what it does is that at each time step it trades. And then, yeah. of course, that trade is has multiple things, you know, the different type of trade, open, blah, 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 positions, as well as also, yeah, uh, yeah exactly that, the outputs. So by metric, you can also summarize those into metric. But usually, yeah, whatever is needed ultimately by the front end, let's call it. Okay, okay thank you. The number of wins, the number of uh, losses, the amount of money that was made, blah, blah. Yeah. And so the whole point of this is, I think, uh, for the user uh, using this system to uh, have some decision mechanisms after looking Absolutely. at some... Uh, Absolutely. That's the that's whole, whole, whole point. Thank you. Wonderful. I hope that was useful. I didn't, you know, as I said, I didn't see any questions from the text, but I imagine. Um, 
has all questions been answered? Hello, Mikhail on the net. Do you have questions? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I joined late. Uh, I don't know if anyone asked this question, uh, but in the problem document, I saw um, there is a user authentication. And yeah. I think I don't get the reason why we do that. Like we have, uh, the, we use the same algorithm. We have the same data. So uh, why do we need uh, user authentication? Uh, it's very simple. You want to show a user what before. I mean, in the back end, you don't need, you know, on the Kafka or whatever, you don't need user authentication. But the first is that imagine that you are you you are providing different services one service is that how many backtests one can make per day right because this is really really expensive to do and unless and then you you might give like if you subscribe for a premium that unlimited backtest per day you know that's one you might subscribe only for free version free version is like two backtests per day and how do you distinguish that? It's the backend thing that, depending on the user, you know, their session. And then you can also show them their historical data, their historical performance, many other things. Thank you very much. Great. And the next big question, we have. No, it's here, so, yeah. uh, Michael, do you mute? Can you mute? Just there is static uh, friction, uh, static noise. Uh, and the net, yeah. It's answered. Thank you. Uh, okay, awesome. Great. We are well, well, well over time. So I'm just going to stop there. But hopefully, um, that was useful and it will allow you now to do things better in each group. Thank you, everyone. I then back to anyone who's closing. All right. Thank you very much, Ibiba. I think this is really helpful. And yeah, it took time, but it was needed.